Hi, I'm Ivan from WebWash, and in this video, I will show you how to use a regular expression in your web form conditional logic. Now, the conditional logic system in web form is very, very powerful. You can use it to change the visible state, the required state of an element based off a value from another element in the form. Now, when you're dealing with single values, everything is fine. But as soon as you have to deal with multiple values, that's where things get a little tricky. So in this video, I will show you how to use the pattern trigger in WebForms conditional logic, which requires a regular expression or regex for short. So I've already gone ahead and downloaded and installed WebForm. And now what I wanna do is I wanna create three elements. The first element will be a drop down, and then below it, there will be two text field elements. And then, depending on what you select from the drop down, it'll show or hide one of the text field elements. So, the first thing we'll need to do is create the drop down. So, go into structure, web forms, and let's just edit this contact web form so we don't have to create a brand so we don't have to create a new one from scratch, and then click on build, and then click on add elements. And then if you search for select, click on add elements, and let's call this type, and we'll add in the three following options, Drupal, WordPress, and then Drupal, and WordPress and then just click on save and then if you click on the test tab and then if you scroll all the way down you can see our fancy select box with our three options Drupal, WordPress, Drupal and WordPress. It's basic, it's just a basic drop down select box, that's it. But now let's create our two text field elements. So to do that, let's go back to the, to the top, click on build, and then just click on add element. And this time select add element on the text field row. And we'll call this one Drupal version, and then click on save and add element. Again, click on add element on the text field row. And this time we'll give it a title of WordPress version, and then just click on save. And then if we click on the test tab, you can see our two text field elements, Drupal version and WordPress version. And now let's add in a bit of conditional logic so that if you were to select say Drupal, then Drupal versions only shown. And then if you were to select WordPress, only WordPress version is shown. Now let's go back to build and let's edit the Drupal version. So click on edit there. And then under conditions, here, we'll define our conditional logic. So from the state dropdown, select visible because we want the element to be visible if the type element has a value of Drupal. So let me just explain it again. The element will be visible if the type element has a value of Drupal. And then let's just click on save. And let's just edit the WordPress version element. Go to conditions and pretty much do the exact same thing. So the state needs to be visible. We need to select type and the value is WordPress. And then just click on save and then click on save elements. And then if we go to test and scroll all the way down, you can see that WordPress is selected and then WordPress version is visible. If you select Drupal, then Drupal version is visible. But what about Drupal and WordPress? We need to set up the condition to handle this, okay? So let's go back into build and then click on Drupal version. So let's edit that. And then conditions. And let's click on add another state. Let's see if this does it. So again, just select visible, um, select type as the element, and then value is, uh, let's just give it Drupal and WordPress. That should work, right? Click on save and no, that doesn't work. The visible state is declared more than once. 
So we can only have one, one of these states declared at any one time, okay? We cannot select visible here because it's already been selected. Okay, so that doesn't work. Let's just delete that. Let's add in another property to this visible state. So select type, value is Drupal. Let's click on save. No, this doesn't work. The type element is used more than once within the visible state. To use multiple values within a trigger, try using the pattern trigger. Oh, this actually kind of tells us what we need to do. We need to use the pattern trigger. So if we go back into conditions, and let's just delete this one. We need to define a pattern, a regex pattern. So we just need to put in a basic regex to check if the type has two values in it. And that's it. So here is a regex which I prepared earlier. Now, just a word of warning, I'm not a regex expert. So please review it yourself and make sure you are happy with it. It took a bit of Googling to figure this out. Again, I'm not a regex expert. Now, this regular expression checks to see if the value from type is Drupal and WordPress. And then because we have a pipe there, that's an or operator or it is Drupal. Now, if you want it to check for a third value, you can just put in another pipe and put in value three or whatever. And so if we then save this, so let's just save it. And let's just do the same to WordPress version as well. But instead of Drupal, this needs to be WordPress. And then just click on save, click on save elements. And then if we click on test, you can see that WordPress has been selected and then it's just the WordPress version. Text field element, if we select Drupal, then it's Drupal version and if we select Drupal and WordPress, both Drupal and the WordPress element is displayed. Perfect, this is exactly how we want it. So that is how you can configure your conditional logic to check for multiple values. Now, before we finish up, I just wanna show you one extra site that can help you build out these regular expressions, and that is regex101.com. So if we grab the regex that we actually used and then pop it into here, and then under test string, if we type in our actual string, you can see that it has matched. And then if we type in Drupal and WordPress, it's matched there as well. And then you can do things such as removing a space to see when it actually breaks I do know that everything needs to be capitalized, so it is case sensitive, so just be aware of that. I'm sure you could change the regex so it's not case sensitive, but if you were to enter in Drupal, that, that won't work. If you were to uppercase Drupal, well, yeah, uppercase Drupal, that doesn't work, but just Drupal works. There you go. And if you even put in a space in at the end, it fails. So that's just something to be aware of. Anyway, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And also, if you want to learn more about Drupal, head over to webwash.net where you can learn about all things Drupal and new platforms in the future. Don't know when that's going to start, but eventually I'll be talking about other things. Anyway, that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.